It's not necessarily the case that the biggest or most complicated parts of a construction project, like in this example, a bathroom vanity, really add the most distinctive touch to the overall look. I think in this project, it's the mirror and the mirror frame that make the biggest difference. Let me know if you agree. I have found time and time again that customers love the mirror frame stained to match the rest of the cabinet work. This is something that's difficult to replicate when using manufactured cabinet parts. In this video, let's go through the process I use to make this mirror frame. You'll be surprised how inexpensively something so nice looking can be made. The vanity and the towers are built from knotty alder. I have some pieces of alder that are inch and a half thick, which are referred to in hardwood terms as six quarter, or a dimension of wood that is six quarter inches thick. So as I'm slicing the six quarter inch piece in half, that gives me two three quarter inch pieces of alder. In the end, the thickness of the frame is about one sixteenth of an inch less than the three quarters, which is perfect for the mirror frame. When I'm cleaning up the edges, I use my shaper with a straight bit on it instead of a jointer. The shaper is just a souped up router table, and because I'm passing the edges through the bit in a lateral direction, I find it's easier and quicker for me. With the shaper hooked up to a dust collection system, it gets rid of virtually all wood chips with each pass. The only other issue to talk about as far as joining the frame pieces together is how do you want to go about securing the corners? In my case, I'm using what are called dominoes, and the cutter that is used to make the slots is a very quick and precise tool that can really only be justified to purchase if you do a lot of this kind of work. It's really making a mortise and tenon joint, and the dominoes can be purchased in any number of sizes depending on the kind of strength you need for the project. All you have to do with this cutter is draw a reference line across the joint, then after adjusting the depth and the height of the cutter, you make two simple plunge cuts on the reference line and you're ready to glue up the joint. As alternatives, because these joints in the mirror frame are never really going to be stressed, Pocket hole screws or biscuit joints or even dowels can be used to accomplish the same purpose. So going from dowels to pocket holes to biscuit joints to domino joints, you have the full spectrum of possible ways to put something like this together that ranges from very inexpensive jigs to do it through high-end cutters that allow you to mass produce projects like this very quickly. There is nothing particularly tricky about completing this glue up apart from holding the joints together until the glue sets up. Because of the overall size, I don't have bar clamps long enough to clamp them that way. I could use strap clamps to put some tension on the frame and hold it more tightly together, but I opted instead to just press the joints together and then use these wood clamps to keep them held in position while the glue dries. Again, with the dominoes holding the joints together, the frame will be really strong once it's dried. I check the diagonals on the overall dimensions of the frame to make sure it's fairly square. It's not necessary that it be exact. The mirror cutters will have about three quarters of an inch overhang in the mirror frame when they make their cut. So their mirror can be exactly square and they'll still have plenty of room to position and silicone the mirror in the frame even if the frame is a little out of square. After a quick final sanding with 220 grit paper on the face of the frame, I'm putting a 45 degree slight chamfer cut on the front edges of the frame. This matches the edges of the cabinet doors and the tower doors on the vanity. I really like this cut on finished edges like this. The final step in the actual construction of the frame is to cut the slot for the mirror to mount in the back of the frame. As you can see here, I'm taking a pretty good chunk of wood out of the back of the frame, and so I'm going to do that in a couple of passes. The rabbit joint that I'm cutting is 3 8 inches wide and will end up a quarter inch deep but I'll only be taking an eighth of an inch at a time, so two passes will give me the quarter inch that I need. You'll notice that as I'm making the cut with the router, I'm making my first pass running with the direction that the router bit is turning. You ought to be careful if you do something like this because it's probably safer, or well, it's, it's definitely safer, to be pulling the router in the opposite direction, against the direction that the bit is running. I made my first pass that way because it will tend to tear out the wood less running with the direction of the router bit, and then I come back in the other direction with the final pass to the depth that I need, pulling the router against the direction of the spinning router bit. I don't know if that makes sense, but as you observe this, this is something that I've always done just because it feels right for me. But depending on the type of wood you're using, running the router in the direction of the spinning router bit 
and cause the router to get away from you if you're not holding it securely. This is one thing I kind of learned the hard way. When I take mirror frames into the mirror guys to have them cut a piece of mirror for me, I used to leave the corners on the back of my mirror frame rounded as the cut from the router makes. Now the mirror guys are more than happy to cut the mirror and then sand off the square corners of the mirror to match the shape of the frame. But they also like to charge me for that extra step, which I can't say that I blame them for because it does take them time to add that extra step. So now I square up the corners before I take the frame in. They are just as happy to cut a square piece of mirror for me, and I'm also happy because I don't have to pay them for that extra step. So we both end up happy, which is probably a good thing, but I think I end up a little happier. All that's left for me is to take the mirror frame back to the job site and test fit it to make sure I haven't missed something. Once I'm there, I figure out how I'm going to actually place the mirror frame in its permanent location before it has the mirror in it. If I know exactly what I'm going to do with the frame when it is stained, finished, and has the mirror mounted in it, it only takes a couple of minutes to install, and there are very few things that can go wrong at that point. One time I didn't do that and carried a heavy mirror frame in to set it over a vanity just like this. I accidentally got in a little bit of a bind and set the mirror frame on the spout of the faucet and scratched the finish. That little blunder cost me 80 bucks and an hour of my time to replace the faucet. Another lesson learned the hard way. The other part of this test fit is to locate studs and mount the frame in its permanent position. I countersink quarter inch holes for my screws and then we'll fill those holes with wood buttons stained to match the frame. I make sure the frame can be mounted flat against the wall as well. In this case, the wall had some pretty good humps in it, so I shimmed the frame so that, at least at these four holes for the screws, the mirror will have a flat surface to rest against. The last thing you want to do at this point is to screw the finished mirror frame to the wall and tweak the mirror itself to the point that it cracks. The frame is now ready for stain and finish. This stain is a Minwax oil-based stain called Early American, which by far is the most popular stain color that my customers choose. It's kind of a middle ground between light and dark stains and is pretty much a true brown color, without too much red or gold tones in it. After stain, I will brush on about three coats of another Minwax product called Polycrylic that has become my favorite finish over the past few years. It is a water-based finish that dries quickly with more durability and no odor compared to lacquer finishes. You can check out other videos from this series on the complete demolition and remodel of this master bathroom. Thanks for taking the time to watch.